your new Microsoft Power BI report um, is accessible via the internet. So it's accessible from any machine or laptop or tablet or even mobile phone that's connected to the internet. Uh, you may have been given access to it via a link in an email, in which case click on the link and that should take you straight through to your report. But if not, you can always type in the web address for the Power BI website, which is just app.powerbi.com. And if you enter that into any browser, uh, it will come to this page, uh, which is the Power BI homepage. You might be asked to log in, in which case just provide the system with your normal Microsoft login. It's probably the same one that you used to log into the computer this morning or the one that you used to log into your Outlook email uh, as well with the same one. Once here, um, I'm going to go to the home page, which is the little home button there, um, which is the default page. And on here, you'll first of all see a list of frequently accessed um, reports and your report might already be there because you might have accessed it before. If not, if you scroll down the list here, you should see your report, your school analytics report. There's some school analytics reports down towards the bottom of the screen. Once you see them, you can click on them and that should bring you straight into the actual report. Your report might look slightly different from this, depending on the version that uh, your school's purchased. Uh, but what you should all see is a list of pages down the side here. Now, this list of pages might have been minimized. You might see that this little button here has been minimized, but you can maximize that list of pages by clicking there. And likewise, there's also a menu on this side here, uh, just above the home button, which you can maximize and minimize by clicking there. I usually leave this one minimized and this one maximized. So I can see all the pages. You can scroll up and down there and see all the pages that are in your report. I'm going to click on the first page, which is the summary page. I think most of the graphs on this view speak for themselves. Uh, I'll just point out one or two things that you might find useful. Uh, the first thing is um, we've got a set of buttons along the top here that affect what is displayed in the three graphs underneath. The default view is year group, and that means we're seeing year groups on the x-axis of all three of these graphs. But if I want to aggregate those totals and those averages by key stage, I can click on key stage there, and I get a list, the same, the same list, but aggregated by key stage. Likewise, if I want to see individual registration groups, I can click on the registration group uh, button there, and I can see every single re registration group subdivided by key stage, and subdivided by year group. So that's just a little time saver. We usually keep it on year group there so we can see perhaps the most useful view, which is by year group. But what I want to show you here is a really useful technique that works on practically every single graph. Um, it's the ability to drill up and drill down. What does that mean? Well, if I hover the mouse over this first graph here, uh, I'll see a set of arrows. And if you hover the mouse over the arrows, it tells you what they do. So this first button, for example, drills up. If I click drill up, you'll see what it's doing. It's basically doing what that button did for us. But remember, that button won't always be there, but these drill up and drill down buttons will. So there we are, we've drilled up on this one. I can drill back down um, to the original level by using one of these buttons here, uh, going to the next level in the hierarchy. This one's a particularly useful uh, button, I think at this stage. It's the one with the two prongs on it, like a little fork. Click on that one and we go back to that original view. Experiment a little. Click on this button again and you'll see we go down to the registration group level. We've got every single registration group there listed out. And that's fine, but it's a little bit complicated and there's a little bit of scrolling involved before you can see all the different registration groups. So I'm going to go back up a level. Remember, it's this drill up button here. And instead of using this button to drill down, I'm going to use this button. This button works in a slightly different way. Uh, first of all, we click this button and it turns on drill down mode for this graph. Nothing changes at this stage. But if I click on year group 10 here, what happens is it drills down just into year group 10 and not the other year groups. So now I've still got registration groups, but it's not such a crowded display. I can actually see the numbers of pupils in each registration group. So that's drill down mode. And each of these different buttons does something slightly different. So I do encourage you to experiment with them and try them out. Uh, I've left drill down mode on there. I'm just going to take it off. 
And now we're back to the usual action when I click on uh, one of these graphs, which is to filter all the other graphs. So this is another point I want you to be aware of. If you're not, if you're not turned on drill down mode, if you just click on a, on a bar chart or on a data point or whatever on one graph, what happens is all the other graphs filter themselves to show whatever you've selected. So because we've chosen registration group 10D here, what we're seeing is on the map. I'm only seeing the pupils on that map who are in registration group 10D. The ethnicity graph has, graph has updated. So I'm only seeing the 18 white English pupils in registration group 10D and so on. All these figures relate to just that one registration group as well. So that's something else to be aware of. If you've not got drill down mode turned on, clicking any data point on any graph automatically filters all the other graphs. So that can be a powerful and useful tool. Uh, once I've filtered for uh, just 10D, to take that filter off, a couple of ways I can do it. I can either click again on 10D and that takes all the filters off. Or the alternative is to click in some white space and that again takes all the filters off. So there we go. That's the, that's the basics of how we can use drill up, drill down um, uh, and uh, filter uh, one graph based on another graph. I'm going to just drill back up here. So we go back to our original uh, view. There we go, drill back up there and I'll just drill back down again so I can see the individual year group. So there we are, we're back to the original view. Now, there's something else I'd like to show you here that we can do on, on most graphs. We've talked about drill up and drill down. Well, there's also something called drill through. Uh, and if you hover the mouse over the pupil premium graph here, um, you'll see that it says right click to drill through. If you do right click to drill through, we can drill through to a pupil list that includes just the pupils that are on that particular data point. So there we go. There's the pupils in, in, in year 11. There's the pupil premium pupils in year 11. You'll see in the column here, those are all pupil premium pupils. To go back to the original graph, I can click on uh, the arrow there. That takes me back to the original graph. And this works on, again, most of the graphs um in in this uh, in this uh, school analytics system so for example here we've got 24 italian pupils in in the school if i right click i get the option to drill through to a pupil list which shows me the 24 italian pupils in the school so look for that look for drill through we've talked about drill up and drill down well that's drill through by right clicking on a data point a bar chart or um, a, pie, a slice of a pie chart or whatever and should take you through to that. And to get back from the drill from the drill through page to get back to the original graph, you'll always have a little arrow there that you can click on, which takes you back. At the side of the screen, no matter what page you're on, you'll always have access to this thing down the side here. It's called the filter pane. If we slide it out there by clicking on the button, you'll see that what we've got is a list of other extra filters that we can apply to every graph on this particular page or whichever page happens to be selected. So if I want, for example, to see this information on this page, but just want to see it for EAL pupils, I can maximize the filter there, little up and down button there, and I can tick on yes. It tells me there's 108 EAL pupils in the school there, and now it filters this entire page. So it's just giving me the data for those EAL pupils. So it's giving me the attendance statistics for just the EAL pupils, which of those EAL pupils are also pupil premium and so on. And you can put as many filters on as you want there. So you could add another filter to this and, and narrow the, the filter down and down and down if you want to by adding an extra filter. So if I wanted to, to just look at, uh, for example, EAL Bangladeshi children, now I've got the seven EAL Bangladeshi children in my school. Once I've finished with those uh, filters, there's an option there to clear the filter. But we've also got an option here. So I could click, well, I could clear them all individually by clicking there as well. But if you want to, there's always an option here with this yellow button here. It's, it's normally white, but when you've got a filter on there, it turns to yellow. And if you click on it, it resets all the filters on the page. So it goes back 
to the original uh, unfiltered view of every pupil. Now let's have a look at some of the buttons that you've got available to you um, within uh, the Power BI service. For me, one of the most useful buttons is this one, the view button, because very often uh, we're using these analyses in a meeting and we want to project it onto a whiteboard. Uh, and the view option here gives us the option of using the full screen. And obviously when we use the full screen, then you can see more. If this is on a, a small projector, then obviously it's easier for other people to read. Plus it also encourages people to focus on what you're actually talking about rather than get distracted by the other parts of the report. And you've got the same access to the same list of different pages and so on. You also have access to the filter pane there. You've basically got everything you can access in the normal view, but we're just focusing in on just this report. Once you've finished, there's a go back button there. Or you can use these two little arrows pointing together, which brings you back to this uh, normal view. Along the top here, we've got some options. On the file, um, we've got some various options here. You can um, save a copy of this report. Uh, you can send a this report to the printer, but bear in mind, it's just going to be this page. And of course, if you save, if you send it to the printer, you lose all the interactivity of this. So wherever possible, we do recommend to people share the actual live report with them. I'll come back to that, that button in a moment. A few other options here. There are options to embed the report if you have a SharePoint uh, website. Uh, you can also embed these reports in a Microsoft Teams team. Uh, more about that in a separate video, perhaps. You can generate a QR code. Um, that allows people maybe in your meeting to scan that QR code and that creates a link that they can then click on and, 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 and get access to this report uh, so long as they are, have already been given permission to see this report that is. So again if you're presenting something at the front of a, of a, of a room then showing the QR code here will give, some, will give people an easy way of accessing this report on their own devices. We've also got some export options here. Um, you can um, analyze this report in Excel. If you take, if you choose this option, you'll need to download a little plugin for Excel. And that basically creates a live link back to the data in this report with a set of uh, pivot tables set up and ready for you to use. So if you're a, an Excel geek, you might find that very useful. But like I say, you do need to download an Excel plugin before that works. You can also um, create a set of PowerPoint slides based on the pages in this report. So you'll have 10, 20 slides in your PowerPoint deck, as it were. Or you can send this report to PDF. All of those are fine, but again, you lose all the interactivity uh, because those are just flat files. There's nothing to click on. You can't drill up, drill down or do any of these nice things. So the very best way, of course, to share this with your colleagues is click the share button here. Uh, and if you've been set up with the rights here, you might not get some, you might not get these options yourself. It depends on whether somebody has restricted your ability to do this or not. But this does allow you to type in somebody's email address um, and uh, find them from the list uh, of people in your organization. And if you click the send button, they'll receive an email with a link to this report. Now there's a button here that says chat in Teams. I'm not going to go into great detail about how you use Power BI with Teams. That's going to be another video, I think. But um, what you can do in Teams is you can embed these reports within a team. So if you use Microsoft Teams a lot, you can go straight to Microsoft Teams, not via Power BI. And within your Microsoft Teams team, there will be a copy of this report all ready for people to interact with. Um, Get Insights um, isn't available for a, lot, for a lot of people. It's um, it's a bit hit and miss that, that that option. You might want to try it. Can do no harm. Give it a go and see what you think. The subscribe button here um, is a way of getting sent an email. So you can put your own details into there or the details of somebody else. Uh, and every time or at a frequency that you 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 decide. Uh, whoever you subscribe to this, and it defaults to yourself, but you can put somebody else's name in there if you wish. They will receive an email, um, and um, 
it's up to you exactly which page they get sent a copy of, but they will get sent a copy of whichever page you choose with the option for a message in there at a frequency again that you can set daily, weekly, hourly. I would suggest perhaps daily is more than enough and you can schedule a time there. Uh, and once you save and close, they will just basically get an email with a screenshot of the screen as it currently is and a link to the live report should they need it. Now, if you want to get into Power BI, there are other options up here. There's an edit option where you can actually edit the report. And there are various other options here for people who want to get behind the scenes and who want to maybe investigate different aspects of Power BI. But that's about it. That's all I wanted to show you in this particular lecture. This is how to navigate and find your way around a report.